is practice first white Tara together as a group and then we're going to do a little um, study today together of um, what are called the three samadhis which are the three meditative absorptions or the three meditative concentrations and how those connect with the three kayas um, the dharmakaya sambhogakaya and nirmanakaya and when i say study um, I mean this because what we're doing is a development stage practice with White Tara. This is a very simple, clear, concise development stage practice. But development stage means essentially uh, meditating by visualizing a deity. And um, all of the practices that we do with Kempo as a group, whether it's Vajrasattva or Guru Yoga or White Tara or maybe other ones that you're doing in your Nundro and your preliminary practices, are oftentimes utilizing visualization of a deity. So the study that we're going to do today is actually helpful to whatever of those practices that you're doing. But I thought first we would start off and practice together because then you can have the experience of your visualization today, of your practice, and then you can take your own experience into it and we can apply it to the study and contemplation portion of today's teachings. So thank you for coming. Our practice has opening prayers and taking refuge and generating bodhicitta. So we're going to just use our practice as that way and not chant the, um, do the opening prayers on the Heart Sutra today because they're included already in our practice. Where might they be? Oh, sorry? Where might they be? Oh, no, we're going to just use the opening prayers in the actual white tire practice. I'm sorry, you just said that. No, that is okay. No worries. <laughs> so um, it starts, we start by taking refuge um, three times, and that's the first line, I and all sentient beings take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Tara, and her mandala. Before we do that, just take a moment, though, to pause and visualize um, the people, the animals, um, sort of the planet, whatever level of visualization of your own intentions that you're practicing for, put that person or those people in your heart right now. So that when you're doing um, the white tire practice, which refers a lot to rays of light radiating out and then returning back and dissolving into our hearts, that when you're doing that visualization, you'll already know that the people for whom you're practicing are already in your heart center. So right now, just take a moment and think about, set the motivation of for whom or what group of people you're practicing for today and think about them and put them in your heart. And then when you have that, really, really have that confidence that once you've established that motivation, that they're there, they're fully present with you meditating. And that all of the blessings that you receive from this practice are also going directly into them. This is especially helpful if you're practicing for somebody who is very sick and very ill. That way you can have a sense that they're receiving very directly the blessings. Okay, let's take refuge three times. I and all sentient beings take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Tara, and her mandala. I and all sentient beings take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Tara, and her mandala. I and all sentient beings take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Tara, and her mandala. We'll generate bodhicitta three times. For the benefit of all sentient beings, in order to obtain the state of perfection, I shall practice the sadhana of Tara. For the benefit of all sentient beings, in order to obtain the state of perfection, I shall practice the sadhana of Tara. For the benefit of all sentient beings, in order to obtain the state of perfection, I shall practice the sadhana of Tara. Prayer of the Four Boundless Qualities three times. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be apart from the sublime bliss that is free from suffering. And may they remain in a state of equanimity, free from attachment and aversion to those near and far. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be apart from the sublime bliss that is free from suffering. And may they remain in a state of equanimity, free from attachment and aversion to those near and far. 
May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be apart from the sublime bliss that is free from suffering. And may they remain in a state of equanimity, free from attachment and aversion to those near and far. We'll do the front generation of White Tara. After we say the emptiness mantra, the Shunyata mantra, Om Maha Shunyata, Jnana Vajra Sabawa Atma Kohang, we're going to rest for a moment and just rest in uh, meditation. Rest in the peacefulness in your heart. And if you have a practice of looking at the nature of your mind, just look at the nature of that great emptiness, the great peacefulness that is your mind. So we'll rest for a few moments and then we'll start again within the space before me. Om Maha Shunyata Jnana Vajra Sobhava Atma Kohang. return to a moment and now out of that innate space of love and compassion will arise the visualization of Tara. Please recite with me. In the space before me appears a white lotus with a moon disk upon it. The love and compassion of all the enlightened beings appear from this as noble wish fulfilling Tara. She sits on a lotus and moon cushion, a luminous moon halo at her back, youthful and radiant, her right hand gestures in an invitation to liberation. Her left hand holding an Apollo flower indicates the protection of the three jewels, giving courage and assurance to those dominated by fear. So now we'll do the mantra recitation, longevity practice and healing activities. And remember again to reaffirm your establishment of the visualization for the people for whom you're practicing in your heart. Just take a moment to recall them to mind. And we'll recite together brilliant light. Brilliant light radiates from the syllable tam within her heart collecting back the essence of inexhaustible vitality and powerful blessings of body, speech, and mind. Energy streams forth from Tara's heart and body. 
I and all beings absorb this nectar of light and are cleansed and revitalized, obtaining the realization of deathlessness. So now we'll recite the ten syllable mantra, Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Soha, the name of Tara. Um, we'll recite that together for five minutes, and then we'll also recite the long life mantra, Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Mama Ayar, Gyana Punye Pitang Kurare Soha, also for five minutes. And I'll ring the bell when we're going to switch mantras. So we'll start right now. Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Soha, 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 Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Soha. So we'll switch to the Long Life Mantra. And just for those of you who may not know the meaning of the mantra, I'll quickly translate it. Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re is calling Tara's name. It's her ten syllable mantra. It's the energy of, of, of Tara as a deity. And then Mama means me. Ayar is long life. Jnana is wisdom. Punye is merit. And then Puting, Kurere Soha, is grant these to me swiftly. So you're asking um, Tara to grant you and all other sentient beings um, long life, wisdom, and merit, which merit in this case you should all also understand as the happiness and joy of all things in life as well. So recall again to mind the people from whom you're practicing and keep them in your heart. And as you recite the long life mantra, especially if you're reciting for someone who's very sick, imagine them as receiving the energy of this sound as light rays and see them becoming very filled with vital rainbow vitality of health and long life and vitality. So that is the joy that you want to place in your heart and, and feel that the energy of this mantra is Tara, is absolutely Tara, Tara's presence uh, in the form of sound. So let's do that for five more minutes and I'll ring the bell at the end of five minutes. Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Mama Ayer Gyana Punye Pitong Kuduri Soha Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Mama Ayer Gyana Punye Pitong Kuduri Soha Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Mama Ayer Jana Punye Pitong Kuduri Soha Now we'll do Tara's prayer in English. Um, Take a moment to think of what obstacles in your life, if you could have them removed immediately, instantaneously, what would those be? And then think about also what your excellent aspirations are, if they could be also granted. So take a moment to think about that, and then we'll recite Tara's prayer together three times in English. Please recite with me, illustrious Tara, Please be aware of me. Remove my obstacles. Quickly grant my excellent aspirations. Illustrious Tara, please be aware of me. Remove my obstacles. Quickly grant my excellent aspirations. Illustrious Tara, please be aware of me. Remove my obstacles. Quickly grant my excellent aspirations. So now we'll do the session conclusion. And at this point, in the same way that we, um, the visualization came out of the great emptiness, the union of great emptiness and compassion, that is the nature of our minds, the nature of our hearts. At this point, we're dissolving the visualization, dissolving all sound and dissolving all wisdom or all thoughts back into the emptiness, the union of emptiness and compassion that is the nature of our minds and our heart. So that's the dissolution practice right now that we're going to do. So please recite with me. All phenomenal appearances become the mandala of noble Tara. Everything dissolves into light and dissolves into noble Tara. Noble Tara dissolves into my heart center and protects me. And then we'll arise again in our ordinary form. And at this point, we'll do a short practice of Guru Yoga, offering the seven limb prayer. So recall to mind any teachers, Kempo Sherab Sangpo, any other teachers whom you've had who have made a big impact on your life, who've been inspired, inspiring people who have shown you enlightenment, who have shown you how to wake up. Recall them to mind and then send forth to them thanks for them being teachers 
and also asking them principally to remain and guide you in all of your future endeavors and all of your future lifetimes. So we'll offer the seven limb prayer right now. I bow down in body, speech, and mind. I present offerings both actually arranged and mentally created. I purify all diluted actions. I rejoice in all pure activities. I request you to remain until total enlightenment. I request your wise and compassionate guidance. I dedicate my merit for the benefit of all beings. Well, dedication of merit. By this virtuous practice, may I quickly attain the realization of noble Tara. Accomplishing this, may I liberate all sentient beings without exception into the same realization. Closing prayers, the last one, three times. May I attain in each and every life the sublime virtues of existence and peace. May I pursue the flawless mindset of altruism working for the welfare of others on a vast scale. Through this very merit of mine, may every single sentient being eliminate all forms of negativity and practice virtue forevermore. May Supreme Precious Bodhicitta take birth where it has not arisen. Where it has arisen, may it never wane, but continue to grow forevermore. May Supreme Precious Bodhicitta take birth where it has not arisen. Where it has arisen, may it never wane, but continue to grow forevermore. May Supreme Precious Bodhicitta take birth where it has not arisen. Where it has arisen, may it never wane, but continue to grow forevermore. So that took us less than a half an hour. And the only reason I mention that is that this white Tara is an amazingly powerful, joyful practice that really can be practiced in a short period of time. And you can extend out, of course, the, the resting and meditation portion after the Shunyata Mantra, Omaha Shunyata, Gyana Vajra, Sabawa Atma Kohang, as long as you'd like to. You can extend out the resting period where you're visualizing white Tara as long as you'd like to. You can extend out the mantra recitation of the ten syllable mantra and the um, long life mantra as long as you want to. But the only reason I mention that it's short is that if you do encounter some great suffering in your life, which many of us do oftentimes, especially someone for whom you really are concerned about their, their um, state of health, their state of mind, you could do a practice of Tara with them sitting in your heart. And it really is a wonderful way of, of increasing your own compassion, but also making a connection with, um, with helping that person. And so even if you're not practicing White Tara as part of your daily practice, when situations like that arise, you can kind of pull it out of your collection of um, ritual practices or sadhanas that you do and, 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 and access the joy and the radiance and the um, compassionate energy of White Tara whenever you need to. Or you can also recall her to mind just very quickly and do like the Tibetans do, which re recite her name, Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Re Soha, and then just have the confidence that she's there right away to help you in a situation. And it's very much what, if you know Tibetan Buddhists, that's very much what they do. Um, as I've said this story, I was talking with Dalma Lama in Tibet Arts and told her about one of my friends who had just found out that her sister had um, terminal cancer, and immediately she just started doing Tara mantras. It was just like a natural reaction. And so she really taught me a lot in that situation of how to immediately arise as that, as that loving kindness, as that wisdom, as that compassion. So keep that in mind. So that's the experiential practice part of it. And now we're going to go in a little bit into the study aspect of it. And um, I don't usually have handouts, but um, today what we're going to talk about it has many layers. And so I've created actually a handout, which... Um, which we'll go through together. But I want to caution you that this is um, basically the culmination of about many years of my own reading and my own uh, research on this topic. So it may appear at, f at first uh, glance to be a little bit overwhelming. But I promise that I will simplify it for you, and then you can keep it and reflect back on it um, later, maybe when we do retreats on Vajrasattva, or if we do retreats on White Tara, or if we do other things, we can ask Kempo 
to even clarify this further for us and help us understand it more. Um, development stage meditation, as I said before, is part of Maha Yoga, which is part of Great Yoga. It's part of Tantra, which means continuity. And so they, they are practices that use the visualization of a deity and mantra to help you, um, to help you work to recognize the nature, the ultimate nature of your mind, which is you know, wisdom, compassion, and loving kindness, ultimate bodhicitta. But um, I wanted to teach you a little bit about the development stage so that you understand why we're meditating with a Yidam deity like White Tara, and so that you understand what the purpose is of it. Because otherwise, to I think Westerners, it can appear as if you're doing a ritual, some kind of magic, and I know that that's probably not how it appears to you, but it's helpful to study this to understand like, the reasons of why the different parts of the practice have the visualization and what the purpose it is, what effect it should have on our realization, it should have on our, to actually change us, to help us look at the nature of our mind. So that's my, um, my goal in talking about this today. But in order to do this, to talk about development stage, it gets into Buddhist philosophy. And specifically, we need to look at three things today. This teaching is sponsored by the number three. <laughs> I'm thinking of Sesame Street. We're going to talk about a lot of three things today. The first thing we're going to talk about is the three, um, the three Vajrayana, um, the three roots, which is the Vajrayana refuge form. And we'll go over this again, so I'm just going to mention the second three is we're going to talk about the three samadhis, which are three meditative con concentrations. And the third is um, the three kayas, which are the three Buddha bodies. And I'm laughing because we, Martin's been watching uh, Monty Python, and he keeps on talking about the sketch where it's like, you never expect the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> one, one, <laughs> two, two. Anyway, forget that, but that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> um, so let's start with, first of all, what is a Yidam deity? Um, White Tara is a Yidam deity, is the short answer. But a Yidam deity is a manifestation of enlightenment. It's a visual, visualized representation of your enlightened nature, your Buddha nature, your enlightenment mind. And it's also one of the three roots that is part of the inner refuge in Vajrayana Buddhism. And you can see on that first page that I've given you a chart on the refuge forms. The outer refuge form you're already very familiar with. Um, that are, those are the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. But the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha on the outer level of refuge also correspond with, with a inner three roots. The, um, the secret refuge, which is the inner aspects of the three aspects of the subtle energy body, and also the ultimate form of refuge, which is the three kayas. And we'll be talking about those later. So you can see that on the column where it says Buddha, the inner form of the refuge is the guru, which is the Sanskrit form or lama in Tibetan. And that's the root of all blessings. The secret correspondence to that in the subtle energy body, or what's called the Vajra body, are the nadi. That's the Sanskrit sa, is the Tibetan, which are the subtle channels through which prana moves. And then the ultimate form of that on the three kayas level is the dharmakaya. And again, we will talk about the, um, the dharmakaya later. So I'm just going just gonna to go through this, but we'll talk about this more in depth. On the outer level of the three jewels, the dharma corresponds with the inner three roots of the deva, or the yidam, which is the root of accomplishment. And again, a yidam deity is the visualized form of the enlightenment mind, the visual repre representation of enlightenment. So like in this case, we're visualizing white tara as the representation or the visualized form of, um, of enlightenment. The secret correspondent to that in the subtle energy body is prana, which is the Sanskrit word, or lung in Tibetan. And those are the inner winds or energies that carry the bindus. You might also know this as chi, which is another um, way of talking about prana, lung. Chi, I think, is the form that they use in Chinese medicine. And Hindus, and Hindus would be prana. Hindus are prana. No, um, uh, we'll get to that in the next column, Lee. When, that's under. That's okay. That's okay. And the ultimate form of that is the three kayas that reflects the Sambhogakaya. And then the outer three jewels is the Sangha, 
The inner three roots re is represented by the Dakini or Chandro, and that is the root of inspiration activity. And here, Lee, we're getting to the Bindus or the Tiglis, and those are the sphere, the seeds, or the essence drops of great bliss. And on the relative level, those are the red and white um, bindus, which are what you receive from your mother and father at conception. The white comes from the father, the red comes from the, um, your mother. And on the ultimate level, um, the bindus or the tiglis or these spheres of essence energy are pr the primordial wisdom, the nature of enlightenment, the, the Buddha mind, Buddha nature. And on the um, ultimate form of that, that also is connected to the nirmanakaya. So this is kind of the map of the transformations that happens. So on the outer level, we take refuge in the Buddha, the teacher, the Dharma, the teachings, and the Sangha, the community of practitioners. On the inner level, we take refuge within our, our root teacher, the guru, um, the, the source of all blessings. We um, practice the practice of the Yidam, which in this case is white Tara. And, um, and what is in some ways being um, accomplished or the activity of compassionate activity is symbolized by the Takini. You have to also remember that White Tara, um, her mandala is called the sphere of the Takinis. So all of her compassionate activities are called the dance of the Takinis. So that's what we accomplish in some ways is the activity of the Takinis, the activity of, of um, infinite dance of compassion based on practicing White Tara. And then in later stages of the development practice, Nothing like what we're practicing right now. You start working with practices that are called the inner yogas, which work with the channels, the um, energies, and the essences of moving through the body in order to realize um, certain meditative states and also accomplish um, certain activities, a form of, of working towards enlightenment. And then on the ultimate level, what is accomplished are the three Buddha bodies, the Dharmakaya, the Sambhogakaya, and the Nirmanakaya. So we're going to talk about that more later in our teaching. So why do we meditate with a Yidam deity like White Tara? We're, we're using Tara as a method, as a skillful method, or as a skillful means to recognize our own awakened nature. So that's why. That's the goal of the practice, is to recognize the true nature of our minds, or the true nature of reality. So in Tibetan Buddhism, the word yidam is actually a contracted form of a longer word, but it means samaya of mind. And it means to bind one's mind via a vow, which is what samaya means in Sanskrit. Um, samaya means either a vow, a pledge, or an oath to a deity who is the embodiment of the enlightenment mind. Now this sounds a little strange to us because we don't usually take very many oaths or vows um, but in some ways, um, where we have, if you think about if you've ever been in close partnership or in marriage or close friendship with someone, you take a vow to remain close to them and to um, connect yourselves with them to achieve a purpose together. And that is in some ways what you're doing with a Yidam deity, is that you're keeping them close to your heart, keeping them close to your mind to consistently remember them and the teachings that you provide them on the nature of your own mind and enlightenment. And also remember that in Tibetan Buddhism, the Yidams that we visualize, we are visualizing our root teachers in the form of the Yidams as well. So there's a very close connection between our root teachers, our guru's teachings, and the visualization practices that we do at this level. So when you visualize White Tara, you can visualize White Tara as being, in essence, the nature of your root teacher's mind. And if you've received pointing out instructions, that's how you practice at this level of connecting those two together. So a deity is a root of spiritual power or accomplishment, which is called Siddhi. And by meditating on the deity, we transform our impure perception our misconception of the nature of reality into pure perception, which is primordial wisdom. And primordial wisdom is another way of saying enlightenment. It's another form of saying we become awakened to the nature of reality. So the purpose of the, of the practice is to retrain ourselves to have accurate perception of the nature of reality. And so that is what we do, why we do this practice, is that we're working with our minds directly to start seeing reality not in a, in a fabricated way, but to actually see how it actually is. Because remember, samsara is 
based on fundamental ignorance of not knowing the nature of reality. So that is, that is what we're doing when we practice this. So we're, I'm going to skip over some things, but you can read that more um, later. On page two, I just want to go to why do we call Yidam's uh, tutelary or chosen meditation deities, which is another one of their uh, translations. So how do you choose your deity from the many peaceful and wrathful deities in Tibetan Buddhism? You know, because there's so many of them. Uh, you can practice Vajrasattva, Vajrakilaya. Uh, you can practice on Guru Rinpoche. You can practice so many different forms. And often it's one's teacher will help you identify which deity is for you the embodiment of truth that becomes the heart of your practice. Remember, the Yidam de deity should be a deity who represents to you the natural radiance or expression of your enlightenment mind, your bodhicitta mind. So finding a deity whose form and whose mantra and whose activities are something that you really wish to embody is very important because then you're going to have an easier time dedicating yourself to the practice and have an easier time actually maintaining a close bond with the deity, maintaining a close bond with the practice, which is how you obtain realization. And so this can happen a number of ways. If you have a close connection with a the teacher, they may actually just suggest to you and say, I think you have a close karmic connection with Tara, or I think you have a close karmic connection with Guru Rinpoche, and I think that you should practice this. I think this will help you. And so this is one of those discussions that in a practice interview, you, if you want to start practicing more of the development stage, this is something that you could talk to Kempo Sheriff Sangpo about. Or it may be just something that you feel very drawn to, and again and again, you like the image of this deity, you like the sound of the mantra, you have just a natural curiosity. Pay attention to those signs, and then again, go talk to Kempo um, and see what practice might be helpful for you. But there's also the tradition that you may just practice the Yidam practices that, of your teacher's lineage as well. So there, you may just be given a practice as well. So again, this is part of the uh, individual relationship that you have with the teacher and why we're so lucky that we have a teacher like Kempo Sherab Sangpa who is accessible, who we can talk to, who we can actually develop a personal meditation practice with. So that's a little bit about the Yidam deity and, and what, why we even visualize a Yidam deity. And so then I wanted to just read shortly a quote from Ayan Rinpoche that I found in his um, book on, called Momentary Buddhahood. And this is at the bottom of page two. So what fuels realization? What fuels realization is the practice of abiding in the genuine experience of meditation over and over again. We have to experience moments of nakedly abiding in the nature of mind, the momentary dharmakaya, over and over again. Of course, this is why we call meditation practice. Without the basis of listening and contemplation, we will not be able to abide in the momentary dharmakaya even once, not to mention hundreds or thousands of times. When we cannot bring knowledge and experience together, realization is impossible. So the only reason I bring this up is that oftentimes, we may just want to meditate. We just may want to abide in the peacefulness of our mind. And I think that shamatha meditation is really important. And then the more that you can do that, it's very important to be able to just abide peacefully. But at the same time, part of the mind has an energy of creativity. It has creative expression. It has a luminous quality. It's awake and aware. And so part of the reasons that we start studying and contemplating and working in the development stage practice is actually to learn how to harness the mind and be able to focus its creativity towards directing, at least in White Tara, towards healing of compassion, healing energies. So the reason that we also practice development stage is to be able to learn how to use the energy of our minds as it arises and be able to direct it towards activities of compassion. So that's why we combine both this resting meditation, but also with the active form, which is the visualization and the mantra recitation. So we're starting to use developed qualities with development stage practice, which are, um, which are part of the creative arsenal or the creative palette, since you're an artist, of the Buddhas. 
the Buddhas who are infinitely skillful in arising in compassionate forms and infinitely skillful in helping people in whatever way they need. But they have to also arise out of their contemplation into forms that are helpful and skillful. So de again, development stage practice is a way of working with the skillful means of the mind, working with the natural radiant, radiance, the natural creative capacity of the mind. So now we'll turn to page three and talk about the three kayas and the three samadhis. And the reason that I just talked about skillful means is because the three samadhis are the three forms of meditative concentration that we practice in development stage when we meditate on white tara are the skillful means by which the deity appears. They're also the skillful means which is the expression of compassion, which is the expression of compassion in daily life as well. And the source for the, the skillful means comes out of the wisdom source of all phenomena, which is the three kayas. So now we're going to look at both of these together. And I have a feeling what's going to happen today is that we're probably just going to talk about the three samadhis. And then uh, next time I teach, we'll talk about the three kayas and we'll make that connection back again. So a samadhi is the, is the Sanskrit word for the state of undistractive meditation abs absorption or a meditative concentration. So it's a one-pointed mind concerning objects that we're examining. And in the development stage practices, which are also called the creation or the generation stage, there are three phases of meditative concentration known as the three samadhis. The first one is the samadhi of suchness, which is also called as it isness. It's the nature of reality. And this corresponds to the Dharmakaya. Then there's the second one is the samadhi of illumination, which is all perceiving compassion. This corresponds to the Sambhogakaya. And the third one is the samadhi of the seed syllable, which is the causal samadhi, which is the union of the first and second samadhis. And this corresponds to the Nirmanakaya. And I'm going to read, read to you now the four stages in development stage meditation. And as I read them to you, because we just practice white Tara, you can think about the practice that we just did and see how our practice is structured based on these four stages. And these four stages are the four stages that would also be present in a Vajrasattva practice, and they're present in any other kind of development stage practice. So this is the structure of a development stage practice that is consistent from sadhana or ritual practice to ritual practice. The details of it, some of the visualizations might be slightly different, but if you're practicing a development stage practice, these four stages are in it. Um, so the first one is that the practice begins with the meditation on emptiness. And that was our, what we said, Om Maha Shunyata Gyana Vajra Sabawa Atma Kohang. That is the signal at this point that you're entering into the samadhi of as it isness where all phenomena are realized as empty in their pure nature. And this is also the realization of absolutely bo absolute bodhicitta, the nature of mind. And here we took a moment to rest in the nature of our mind, to look at the qualities of our mind, which are peaceful, empty of any inherent existence, yet radiant, and have that quality of clarity, that we can recognize that. And then from the second, um, from the state of the, of the samadhi of as it isness, or the samadhi of suchness, from this state arise exuberant blissful ways of compassion in what is known as the samadhi of all perceiving compassion. And this is the realization of relative bodhicitta. So out of realizing that all phenomena are equal in their that they're empty, empty of inherent nature, but also they're equal in their state of primordial purity. They're, they're all equal. Out of this arises a natural loving kindness or a wave of compassion for all beings and all phenomena that we encounter. And so that is what arises in the sec second uh, meditative concentration. Then out of the third meditative concentration, which is the union of these two, the first samadhi of suchness and the samadhi of all perceiving compassion, out of arises this, the causal samadhi, in which arises a seed syllable, in our case it's tam, for tara, from which rays of light emerge, purifying the entire environment of samsara and the beings within it into the nature of emptiness. And then one's mind becomes the seed syllable, 
which in turn transforms into the appearance of the deity. The mandala is seen as the palace or the sacred environment of the deity. And the form of the deity is the indivisible appearance of skillful means and wisdom. The indivisible appearance of compassion and the wisdom of emptiness is another way of saying that. And all experience is perceived as the retinue and activity of the deity. And all perceptions are viewed as deity, all sounds as mantra, and all thoughts as wisdom. So this is the sacred environment of the mandala, or the sacred circle of a wisdom deity such as White Tara. And out of her seed syllable tam, which is the nature of her wisdom, her recognition of the absolute truth of emptiness, arises tremendous compassion that spreads out as rays of light and everything in her sacred circle becomes purified, becomes joy, becomes bliss, becomes the expression of compassion. So that at that point is, is the union of the Dharmakaya, of her Sambhogakaya form, which is the, her radiant rainbow body as it appears, and the union of that becomes the Nirmanakaya, the absolute expression of a pure land of wisdom, a pure land of compassion in union. So that's the Nirmanakaya. And then the fourth part of development stage practice, which we did also is the dissolution. At the conclusion of the visualization and the mantra practice, you dissolve the deity, empty form, you dissolve the mantra, empty sound, and you dissolve empty awareness, the wisdom teachings, back into basic space, which is the nature of the mind, which is now we're back to the Dharmakaya, which is from which all of this arose out of. And so this is our sacred circle and the sacred process of the development. And also the fourth one is a very short description of the completion stage practices. So that is from Sogyal Rinpoche in his guide to Vajrayana practice for the Rigpa Sangha. And I think what we'll do is we'll save the um, rest of the teaching for the next time I teach, because then we can look at how this is connected to the three kayas, which are the Dharmakaya, the Sambhogakaya, and the Nirmanakaya. And also we're going to look at what the ultimate purpose of, of, um, of the development stage practices is to help us change our view of death, help us change our view of the bardo, and help us change our view of rebirth or birth. And so we'll make those connections next week. But I thank you for coming to practice. Um, it's always a joy to practice together as a group, and it's really an honor to share these teachings with you. And I hope that over time, we can ask Kempo, obviously, to clarify these teachings and give us more of these teachings in, more in depth. But at least I want to bring up some seeds of questions that we can think about together as a group so that when he comes back, we can ask him, can you help us understand this more? Um, because we've already had a taste of this based on doing White Tara or Vajrasattva or Guru Yoga, and it would be really nice to learn more from him about the um, theory and practice behind the development stage. So as we're practicing you know, our texts at home, we can practice it with more knowledge of understanding of why that structure is there. Om dare da dare dare mama ayar jana baye biran kare so Om dare da dare dare mama ayar jana baye biran kare so